I have no idea how this works. Um, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be looking at. I think it's over here. What is going on here? Oh, no, that's bright. Let's make that go away. Okay. <sighs> oh, I'm so very off center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can we get some more interesting background? I don't know if anyone is going to find this. I had it scheduled. I don't know how to see the chat. Um, I do have chat, I think, on. Um, if you're here, say hi. Um, hopefully the chat bubble, hello, Veronica. Okay, so at least one person can see me. Um, I am in a hotel room. Hi, Katie. So here, so you can see there's my son. There are my birds. My husband is going to be coming shortly and he will have pizza <laughs> for me. Um, hello, Gail in Michigan. It looks like I'm not gonna be able to in any way scroll backwards. So if I miss it, I'm just gonna miss it. I'm sorry about that. Um, I could not figure out how to make Hello, Andra. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, totally safe. We've like been completely safe here. Yes, we evacuated. Um, and even if we had gone home, <laughs> there's no power in my house right now. It hasn't been any power for going on two days now. So I wouldn't have, hello, Cindy, that I wouldn't have been able to, to, to really do anything from my house. Um, I don't even know what to say. So the thing is, and apparently this is like a known problem. Denise, hello, Denise. Um, well, I'm glad you didn't get it. I didn't want anybody to get it. You know, it, it's, it, it's just the, the facts when you are living in Florida. Um, I have friends in Fort Myers. I have friends in Tampa. There was never a good spot for it to hit at all. But what happened is, so, and apparently this is a known problem with YouTube, is that it can, um, so I scheduled the live about, you know, earlier, like over the, the weekend. Uh, okay, hello, Deborah. Zone D and said, said the morning has power and no damage. Well, excellent. I'm actually in zone D as well, but we are big chickens and we got out of Dodge. Uh, we have been checking the Florida power light. Uh, Elliot, have you checked recently to see if we have? It's off. It's off. So we have been checking the Florida power and light FPL. Um, hey, Gay. Hey, Deborah. He evacuated. Good. The FPL um, site tells you whether or not you have power or not. And also my husband left cameras on in like, like webcam -y type things in our house so that we could monitor it. And those are all black. So, so far it seems like we do not have power back, but we are going back tomorrow. So fingers crossed, we will have power tomorrow. The, but, but with the, um, Oh, welcome, Lizzie. I'm glad you found me because I'm frustrated that I couldn't figure out a way to use the scheduled slot, the, the space holder slot, because I try to give y'all notice that it's coming, right? And apparently if you use your PC to schedule the live, you cannot then use a device, a, a, a handheld device to make it go live. So I had to make this new one. So this is not the one that was the placeholder. I made a new thumbnail for it, but that was only, I only thought of that a couple hours ago because I've spent a large chunk of the day trying to figure out how to make it work on my phone, only to find out that it really just isn't something you can do. If you, if you want to be able to do it on your phone, you have to schedule it with your phone ahead of time, and then I could have done it. So, oh, hello, Nina. Thank you so much. Um, but yes, we are completely safe. The only 
primary like concern I have about my home. See, Lizzie is asking if my home is safe. As far as I know, my home is safe. Uh, we, our neighbor sent us some pictures. We lost a very small tree, like, like a palm tree the size of me in the front yard, which I didn't particularly care for anyway. And a section of our fence in the backyard has been blown over that we'll have to put back up. The only real concern I have is I have a freshwater fish tank and with the power being out for several days, I have the sneaky feeling that all of my fish might have gone belly up while I've gone. And you know, it's gonna make me a little bit sad because we've had some of them for several years, but it is what it is. We couldn't bring our fish with us. Uh, yes, hello, Tracy, but we did bring our burbs. There they are. There are our good birds. They have been very loud here. And there's my son again laying on the, do you mind being on this, Elliot? I don't mind. He doesn't care. So there are the good birds. Say hello, birds. <whistles> Those are good birds. They've been a little bit loud, but we found a pet friendly hotel here that isn't charging us 150 bucks a night for pets. And apparently it's one of the only ones in the area because I think every other person, like every other room here has dogs. <laughs> There, I've never seen so many dogs in one hotel room. It was pretty, in one, not one room, but in one hotel, which is awesome. We are actually straight up in downtown Miami. Um, I can show you out the window. Let me see. I'm kind of attached here. Let's flip this around. There we go. There's Miami out there. We're not in a particularly scenic part of Miami, but we are in Miami. My son and I... Uh, drove down and I had him use our phone. Um, oh, hello. Thank you, Joyce. Yes, just fine. My son and I used, you know, the map and I had him do avoid highways. So we drove through parts of Miami. We went down on Miami Beach, there's like an island, and we drove through the Art Deco section and we, we just went and walked on Miami Beach a little bit just for fun, just to get out of the hotel room. But mostly we've spent most of our time in the hotel room because my husband has to work. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we evacuated. He works from home and he needed the computer. And I think that might be him coming home. Yes, the birds are greeting him. Um, and my husband has come back. So there he is. I don't know, what's gonna happen if I turn this light on? See, this light is not a good, does that help a little bit? <laughs> it's like mood lighting. <laughs> it brightened things up a little bit, I, you know. But I really appreciate y'all joining me. Um, <laughs> give it the thumbs up. I know this is not the best, that, but, but I figured at least this out. Yes, thank you so much. Um, the the store has been closed all week and hopefully we're going to open up probably I so my boss was actually on a trip she was in new york so i think we're going to open up tuesday is going to be the first time we open up the store we're probably we're going to have to go home we're going to have to clean up and it's just going to be debris and everything it's not a, we don't have big we don't have big trees in our yard or anything like that i tell you i i actually brought knitting with me because i was like hey i can get some knitting done and would you believe so I crammed stuff in a bag. I have the yarn. I wound the yarn. I got it. And it's fingering weight yarn. And I grabbed a size five needle. But in reality, hello, Margaret. Hello, Liz. No, you cannot have that. Sorry. My son just asked me if he could bring a caffeinated beverage this late. And the answer is no. Um, I grabbed instead of a size five needle, I grabbed a size eight needle. So that was completely useless. Uh, so I haven't gotten any knitting done. Um, Pamela, ooh, 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 I can, I can scroll back. Oh, thank you to everyone. Ooh, ooh, I figured it out. You know, 
we left we left on Wednesday. Did we leave on Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. We left on Tuesday. Uh, we were watching it. If it had hit Tampa, it, we would have been in a really bad situation because that would have put it. And, you know, it was trending. There, there was really, it was bouncing around and being unpredictable. And the thing is, is there was no way it wasn't going to hit near us. Now, technically, I'm in zone D. So if you've never been in a hurricane situation, the way that the hurricanes work is that the areas are sorted out into evacuation zones based on mostly your proximity to water or the elevation of your property. My mother lives directly on Flippy Creek, so she was in A. So it was like, yeah, you got that's mandatory evacuation. Sarasota had mandatory evacuation for A and B. Um, I was in zone D, so I was not mandatory evacuation, but literally I can walk to my mother's house in five minutes. If I walk fast, 10 minutes, if I mosey. So we're less than half a mile apart and it's that big of a difference because it's just how close are you to the water and what is the likelihood of flooding. So we didn't technically have to evacuate, but again, as I said, my husband has to work from home and if we lose power, he can't work. So, and what are we gonna do in our house with no power? It's just, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, oh, darn it. I figured out how to make it pop up at one point and now it's not. Oh, Deborah, you're in the same area right off of Bee Ridge. So I'm up a little bit north of you. Um, we are close, we are north of Weber. So again, same area. I just, <laughs> again, I'm a chicken. Uh, I, I just, I mean, and it's not like we've been doing anything here. Actually, we've been eating a lot of Cuban food and it's been absolutely delicious. You know, we are where we are in Miami. If we just go straight that way, we're in Little Havana and you do that. You have a rental in Sarasota. Okay. It, you know, evacuation, um, in a way, evacuation is a privilege. Not everybody can just pack up and go. Uh, a lot of people don't really have the wherewithal to, to, to travel across the state and stay in a hotel. We used a, lot of, um, we used a lot of points for this. Yeah, Miami is great for food. And there are shelters, and all of the shelters in Sarasota accept pets. But since we decided that since we do have the ability to evacuate and and we have that then we weren't going to go to a shelter because you know if we don't have to go to a shelter leave that space for people who need the shelters because there are definitely people who who don't have the privilege to evacuate and they desperately need the shelters so we didn't want to take up any space in a shelter that someone else could use yeah arnetta you are gonna get rain uh it actually so they expected it to go up the center of Florida for a while, but it kind of jotted almost like really fast across. It's out in the Atlantic and they're expecting it to regain hurricane force before it hits, I believe it's predicted for South Carolina. Now it's, I think only gonna be a one, and that's you say only a one still not great and i still have my fingers crossed for everyone in south carolina who is in the path of this particular storm i actually used to live in south carolina i was lived in i was in high school uh, when i lived in south carolina and hurricane hugo which was a cat five atlantic storm hit on my 16th birthday <laughs> So I have a lot of familiarity with hurricanes and uh, they're no fun, but they don't scare me anywhere near as much as tornadoes do. Tornadoes, you don't really get warning, but again, they're scary. If you've watched any of the videos, the, the storm surge is absolutely terrifying. People, entire neighborhoods in Fort Myers have been completely washed away. And, and when I mean completely washed away, you can find now that everybody has a phone and uh, like a video camera in their pocket, we have all this footage. Port St. Lucie. Oh, hang on. I'm trying to read the, oh, come on. Here we go. Yarn over girl. Hey, Lisa. Port St. Lucie, 
Not everyone can leave. Your sister's in Miami. Well, I'm in Miami too. So we went to this place called Versailles, Versailles. I don't know how they pronounce it here. And it says it's the world's most famous Cuban restaurant since 1971. It was absolutely delicious. Thank you so much for joining Deborah. Yeah, I don't know how much rerun there is going to be. This was just mainly, hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining. I mainly did this because I had said I was gonna do it. Um, and yay fantastic my golfer thank you for joining i'm really sorry that i'm not at the location that i said i was going to be at i could not figure that out it's confusing southern california <laughs> sunny yes so you you have overcast in sympathy i'm guessing and california has its own set of natural disasters we all have you know things we have to face <laughs> you you ordered Uber in your yes it, it's hugely popular and then I actually we went to today this place called El Palicio del Viaje I cannot speak Spanish but it, essentially it's Juice Palace and it's a small chain here there's like nine locations um, oh thank you thank you Deborah for yeah thank you for showing up. So I found this Juice Palace place, which apparently is a big local place, and it was absolutely amazing, from one of my personal favorite YouTubers to watch. Um, the name of the YouTube channel is Strictly Dumpling. He does not need my boost at all. He is like a huge, huge YouTuber. But what he essentially does is travel like all around the world and eat stuff. And I like eating stuff and he's funny and kind and interesting. And so I found, I knew he had gone to Miami and I found his little Havana one, uh, video and went to one of the restaurants that he went to, this, this juice palace place and it was delicious it's kind of like a uh, cafeteria style where they just have all of these uh, hot dishes and everything and you're like and and I use my very very broken Spanish to make sure that we got food we had chicharrones that were absolutely amazing such delicious chicharrones and I actually have reached I think my maximum pork percentage that my body can be but it was amazing it's i don't know it makes me realize i should probably reload that duolingo app and try get back on trying to figure out spanish i really wish i had a second language i don't know if you'll know knitting content i actually had a wonderful uh she's from chile i believe uh marcella chang she translated a couple of my patterns into Spanish because there's a fairly substantial Spanish speaking knitting community here on YouTube. And well, I mean, there's a huge, obviously Spanish speaking community, but I wanted to be able to reach out to that. And I really wish I could speak Spanish, but you know, if wishes were horses, I need to do something about it. But that owl, man, I would do the Duolingo and I did it for a while, but that owl just really gets on my nerves and he just yells at me and he's really like, I don't need to do it. You too bossy, Mr. Owl. And also Jose uh, co-made a lot of manzanas. And I'm like, I don't know how many apples I need to eat in Spanish. Uh, that's like one of the only words. I'm like, yeah, manzana. <laughs> but apples are not my favorite thing in the world. So, um, so yeah, but that actual knitting content. Thank you so much, Chrissy. And thank you so much for joining us. This is really not going to be one of my best lives. I don't think I'd appreciate if you give it a thumbs up just to let me know you're here. But again, I'm in a hotel room. I don't have anything prepared. It's been a little chaotic. Uh, it's, it's actually been kind of amazingly boring <laughs> as well because we're just in a hotel room we're not in an area of miami that's particularly foot traffic friendly and i don't want to run out of gas because running out of gas could be a substantial problem right now i know we are going home tomorrow and i know that there are areas that we're gonna have to drive through that they don't have any gas. Like the gas stations are completely out of gas because they've been unable to get gas deliveries and everybody's been stocking up on it. So we'll definitely fill up here before we start driving across the state. 
but un unnecessary driving is not something that was on our list of things that would have been a safe thing to do because we're going to need that gas. Roger, is there any chance you could bring me my knitting bag? I can show you all the yarn I was planning on knitting with, <laughs> but I have the wrong size needle. And you know, I could have fudged it. I needed a five. It's fingering weight, I needed a five. I could have fudged it, but not up to an eight. Eight is too high, eight is too much. Um, so this, this is the yarn. Oh, here, let's point it, here we go. You know what would be easier here, Barbara? Whoop. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it got angry at me. Ah, there we go. There it is. So it's this burgundy color. It is a single. It, it's this kind of, it's pinky, rosy, burgundy-ish. There we go. And do I have the tag in here? I do. So it's, and that's backwards. So let me see if I can fix it. Mm, no, I cannot fix it. I don't know how to do it. This is Handmaiden Fine Yard and it's Mini Maiden. 50% uh, wool, 50% silk, 500 meters in 100 grams. So it really is a light fingering weight and doing it on a five was gonna be pushing it. Going up to an eight is just not gonna be viable. Um, I pulled this out. I pulled my needle out and I was like, oh, it's kind of chonky. <laughs> it's kind of too chonky. <laughs> it does wacky things. And so this, this is, if y'all want to see, so this is a new pattern that has been hanging out for a while. And literally, this is how I start working on things. There's this, this is a big pattern. So this, and then this so this is a lace pattern and these it's a lot it's a lot chart wise but it's all very very simple it's just all like yarn over knit together or slip slip knit yarn over and it's just stockinette and garter so it's just a lot of charts uh so now that i have it all lined up this is something that's been in my folders on my computer for a while but I never got around to it. And I thought, hey, this would be the time to get around to it. But no, apparently no, I didn't get to get around to it because I forgot my needle. But when I get back, it's ready to rock and roll. And that'll give me something to knit on. And so I'll put all this stuff back and it'll just hang out. Okay, what did I miss while I was fussing? Okay, hello, hello. No, that's not what I want to do. There we go. Yeah, the, the, the owl mead. Oh, smiling as you speak. Well, that's an interesting tip. You know, I, I can do the accent. Um, it's not backwards for you. Oh, that's good to know because it's looking backwards for me. Uh, the funny thing is, I can, have I talked about my houses? As far as I know, Elizabeth, my house is just fine. Uh, our neighbor who stayed took some pictures. We lost a small tree and a chunk of fence. And otherwise it seems fine. I think our biggest lasting problem, as I mentioned, I have a, um, I have a freshwater fish tank that is probably going to no longer, well, it's going to have x fishes in it uh which is unfortunate it may gonna we've had several of them for quite a few years but they are fish and one of the things i always said is you get your children fish tanks to teach them uh, about death because fish do not are, are not the most hardy creatures uh we do our best to take care of them and i did go to you know what i don't think that's helping i don't know i don't know if that's helping or not um Hang on, in brighter light maybe. You're in, you're in, you're in frame now, Raj. Just to let you know. 
just so people can see you, so don't don't pick your nose or anything. Um, so what was I talking about? My fish. Oh, the other thing. The other thing I'm a little bummed about, but again, on the grand scheme of things, not a huge deal. People have lost their entire everything. Um, <sighs> our refrigerator, you know, the power's been off. We have a full freezer and our refrigerator. And so there's gonna be a lot of stuff in there that, you know, depending on, so I did, okay. So just in case, if anyone's ever in a hurricane, or another natural disaster kind of situation, one thing that you should do is I took a small cup of water and put it in my freezer and let it freeze over. And right before we left, I put a quarter on the surface of it. And um, <laughs> too much salt water, the salt water, would they're fresh water fish, so that would have killed them anyway, Cindy. So what you do is you put your quarter on top of the frozen water and so then when you come back if your power has gone off while you were gone then when you look at it if your freezer thawed the quarter will have sunk down in and especially if like if when we get home hopefully fingers crossed our power will be back on so what frequently will happen is everything will still be frozen, but you don't know if it thawed and refroze. So if you go and you look at that little thing and the quarter has sunk down in it and is frozen like halfway down or all the way down in it, you know that your freezer defrosted while you were gone. What have I been doing? I have been sitting in this hotel room uh, messing around on my phone. Mostly we watched uh, the Great British Baking Show we were able to log into Netflix. We watched uh, some, apparently there's a new Iron Chef <laughs> on Netflix. We watched that. We watched the Hilda movie, which Hilda is a really cool on Netflix cartoon that was a lot of fun. My son and I went to the beach today just to walk around. Oh, Veronica, yay. So it's not my, it was not my original idea, but I'm happy to pass it along. It is definitely something that can be helpful in a, this kind of situation where you may lose power while you're away and you don't know how, how bad it's going to be, but more likely not. If things thought out, we're going to have to chuck a lot of stuff, but C'est la vie. You know, it, it's not, not, not a lot in the grand scheme of things. I have a huge succulent collection. All that was moved indoors. I moved all my orchids indoors. My house is a hot mess right now inside, but hopefully it's dry. And that is the, the primary concern. Again, my heart just, just is breaking for those who were south of me, those in Port Charlotte, those in uh, Fort Myers, um, I have friends down there. Venice got hit very pretty hard. One of the things we had to do last minute was my son sails out of the uh, with the Venice youth sailing program and we had to go down there and pick up his boat and bring it up because it just sat out and they didn't have anywhere to secure it. So it's in my mother's garage to make sure that that didn't get flying about and damage anybody or itself. I don't know what the storm surge was like mm. in Sarasota. It, it is possible that I, I also have a small boat that I sail. It could have gotten damaged, but I won't know that for a while. Again, it, they're, they're things. The important thing is that my family is safe and you know my crazy birds are safe. And, and, you know, we're here. And if the yarn got damaged, hey, I could just buy some more yarn. That's an awesome idea. We did do, another thing they always tell you to do in preparation for this sort of thing is to walk around your house once inside and once outside and just video everything so that if you, you have to do insurance claims, you can do those claims. Thank you, Tracy. I, I just, it's, I don't want to in any way diminish anyone who has had more anxiety, anxiety about this. And if you've had any losses, like I have a friend, um, yeah, the yarn, the yarn should be fine. It's in weatherproof totes. 
uh, I have a friend who's very close to my house and she stayed and she has a big old mango tree in her backyard that tumped over and that if they lose that tree that's going to be that's going to be sadness for her because she is very much into her yard and i don't want to diminish like that loss but there's there's definitely a scale of loss that people are facing here that is tremendous uh, um i don't know i i don't know what to say about it <laughs> Actually, my friend is, she's a super nice lady. So the trees fall over. Now, what's really interesting about the trees, um, oh, you were there for Elena and Andrew. Andrew was, I was not here for Andrew, but I remember Andrew, it was really, really bad. Some of these storms are really, really bad. So what's interesting about a lot of these trees going over is it's not the wind really that knocks it over. What happens is we have already been having a lot of rain, so our ground is very saturated, and then it's been dropped, it drops so much rain and the, the, rain, the ground gets so saturated that the roots just kind of, these trees aren't like snapping off, they're, they're coming up at the root. Uh, yes, I can't imagine what would have happened if it had hit Tampa. It, it, Tampa would have been, oh my goodness. Um, I can't imagine. Uh, hopefully maybe this is a wake up call for Tampa and they can work on their infrastructure a little bit because if it had hit Tampa, we would have been looking at a lot. I mean, there's a huge amount of damage in Fort Myers. And actually, so I was telling you about Venice. So when we take my son down to sail in Venice, there is an old, old, like 1950s, 40s old theater. And like the whole, that, that theater, the whole top of it was ripped off. And that's going to be a major loss for that community because it was a historical uh, building for that community that was used for a lot of community events. And so that is really, we're gonna be figuring out what this storm took from us for quite some time, but the hope is it didn't take too much life. No power for five days. You have a generator? That's smart, Denise. Um, <laughs> we all need to pay attention to our yarn. Yes, yarn is important. Um, and, and this is not the end of hurricane season, so it should be interesting to see if this is gonna be a bad season. But, so, <laughs> that's a whole lot. That's like a half an hour on a hurricane. Does anyone have any questions about yarn or knitting? I'd be happy to, to maybe take my brain off of hurricane for a little while. <laughs> There's not, I don't have anything exciting to show you. Oh, you saw Brian, you saw the Venice Theater. It is, yeah, it is really a big bummer um, to see that. And also you see the videos with like the yachts floating by into people's houses. Oh, Heidi, Michael, Michael was bad. Michael was super, super bad. There, there have just been some really, really big ones. And I'm pretty sure Ian's gonna go down on that list of where they retire names because it's so bad. Um, Cindy, I do very much wish I had something to knit. I brought my thing to knit and I haven't been able to knit on it. And I'm like, I could have gotten so much done. Do I have any projects besides the fingering weight shawl that I'm working on? Yes, actually. And this is something that I could have been doing at home. This was actually what I had planned for Monday and Tuesday of this week. I have, um, is the yarn suits on? Heidi, I'm... Not sure what that question was. I think it went by too fast or misspell. My, my yarn is fine. <laughs> it's, in, it's in tubs. So I actually have a hat. I have a hat that's completely knitted and completely blocked and I just need to write the pattern. Uh, yes, Ian has to be retired. I think Ian's done. Uh, it, just in case, again, if you're not familiar with hurricanes, once a hurricane is severe enough and does enough damage, they s retire the name from rotation because they go through a lot of names and they'll come up again and again. If the, the hurricane doesn't really do much of anything, it stays in rotation. But like Andrew's retired, Camille is retired, Katrina's retired, Hugo's retired. Um, so many have been retired. 
Um, and I'm guessing Ian is also going to be retired, which it didn't sound very scary, but it definitely has been. The yarn shop, I think it should be fine. It, it is much more inland than we were and had very, very few in the, the realm of windows or mm -hmm. anything, but we won't know until we can get in there and nobody right now is able to get there, but we will know soon. Um, Oh, my hat. Elizabeth asked about my hat. So, you know, not last weekend, but the, well, maybe the weekend before I taught my blocking class at A Good Yarn. Um, okay, so you, Debbie, Debbie just got a newsletter from A Good Yarn and everything is fine. So there we go. So she knows more than I do. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my phone right now. So whenever I do a blocking class, the thing I block in the class as a demonstration is a hat. And sometimes I reblock old hats, but what I really like to do is knit a new hat and take that opportunity to make a new hat design because I enjoy knitting and designing hats. So I made a hat and blocked a hat during the my blocking class and it is done. I need to photograph it and I need to write the physical pattern, but to do that, I need my computer. And right now, um, Debbie, hoping to be open. I, I can't answer that for you, Debbie. I can, as long as everything's up and running, I can't see why the class wouldn't be open. Uh, but my computer is actually in my car. <laughs> like we only had the one car that we brought because again, the aforementioned gash, gas, gash, the aforementioned gas thing, because gas is a little bit scarce on the ground right now. So we just took our one car and we brought like the physical towers. We brought those, my computer, my son's computer and my husband's laptop. So those are like the primary thing, the things that took up room in our car, birds, computers, and just our few uh, cherished valuables. We have a little safe that has, you know, like our marriage license and birth certificates and things like that. Uh, what do I use to block my hats to prevent creases? So that is actually one of my secrets in my class, but I'll tell y'all, I use balloons. That is the big thing. That is why it's what I block in the class because it's, I hope, amusing for people to watch me do it. I actually, once the hat's wet and everything, I lay it down on a flat surface with the open part up and I blow up a partially blow up a balloon, stick it inside, flip it over so it's supported, and then inflate the balloon so it blocks the hat. Okay, something just went by. You know, Heidi, I didn't know if I was going to be having the live until I got it figured out. So that was two of us. Yes, yeah, so the balloon. Now, the big thing you got to remember about blocking a hat is so I get the, the kind of eggy shaped balloons and you wanna blow it up so that you're blocking the hat, but so that the, the ribbing is not really being blocked. The ribbing is what keeps it on your head. So you don't wanna stretch that ribbing. You wanna like squish that ribbing in and let it be, in this context, the ribbing is a functional thing and you don't want to block that. That's why blocking a hat on like, when people block them on like a head form, that's not a good idea because what you're blocking there is the ribbing. And you want the ribbing to pull in as much as possible because that's what keeps it on your head. So if you use just a balloon shaped, an egg shaped balloon, you blow it up so that the top of the hat and like the body of the hat is filled with the balloon, but the ribbing is around where the taper is, so it's not expanding that ribbing at all. And that's the thing I demonstrate in my class, which I hope people find amusing because, you know, it's kind of like a little stunt that I do to show people, but you can use some really creative things. The other thing, if you don't have balloons, you can use to block a hat is a plate, uh, especially if you're doing like a beret, a plate. You can stretch over a plate or a bowl or something that's the right shape. Oh, you figured out how to do your Bible bind off. Very good. Good job, golfer. I'm so excited that you got that bobble thing figured out because I was like, a bobble bind off sounds like a, a, a tedious proposition to me. <laughs> but I bet it is absolutely beautiful, the, the bobble bind off. So things like um, getting creative and blocking is a lot of fun. <sighs> like if you're trying to block a cowl, like a, just a straight cowl. 
using the balloon idea for a Christmas gift. Excellent, Tracy. So like if you just have a straight cow, not like the cow I just released, not a tapered cow, but a straight cow. Um, yarn over girl, really enjoying your suggested patterns. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Oh, come on, what are you doing? Oh, hello in British Columbia. I believe some of the rain from here hit at least the, the east coast of Canada. Um, so so a, a, a straight cowl, right? If you're trying to block a straight cowl, one thing that I've seen people do that you can use is a yoga mat. So you take your yoga mat and you curl it up, right? So it's this big around, and then you put it through your cowl and then allow it to like unspiral until it's the circumference you want. And since it's yoga mat, you can pin to that and you can just stand it up like a cylinder and your your cowl is wrapped around it. You use your hat, a balloon while drying your golf hats. That's hilarious. So you can definitely use creative things. Um, I know people who, when they're trying to avoid seams, they'll put pool noodles in things to keep it curved. I've never done it, but that's something I've definitely heard about. They're all different, all different creative ways to go about blocking. So hang on. Hello, come back. There we are. Um, <coughs> oh, you know what? You're talking about the suggested pattern podcast. Um, <laughs> I need to get one done for next week. I don't know how, how effective I am gonna be getting that out, see if we can do that. Yeah, in North Carolina, yes, you will definitely be getting some of our rain in North Carolina. Um, you know what, Elvira, I'm not knitting right now. I brought the wrong needle, super frustrating. Um, let me see if I missed anything. <sighs> Start, see, and here, Debbie, here's the issue with using um, pool noodles. As well. So, Debbie, the issue with using a styrofoam head to block your hat is that what you're blocking at that point when you put it on is you're blocking the ribbing, and you don't want to block your ribbing. The ribbing is what holds it on your head. And if you pull the hat down far enough that the ribbing's, like, around the neck, then you're, like, blocking a face into your hat so it's it's i mean if it works for you that's fantastic but it is not something that i recommend you use for for blocking a hat because you really don't want to block that that ribbing the ribbing i mean the reason why you typically knit the ribbing on a smaller needle uh frequently you'll have a, your cast on for your ribbing and you knit it on a smaller needle and then you'll even increase a little bit to get more is because that that um ribbing is intended to have negative ease and that's what keeps it on your head uh I don't know if I've talked about, I know I've talked about negative and positive ease, but it, it bears restating. So when something is knit, like if your head's 21 inches around and you knit something that is 21 inches around, that is what's considered neutral ease. The thing you're knitting is the exact same size as the body part that it's supposed to fit. If you want if you're, again, if your head is 21 inches, you typically want your hat band to be more like 19 inches. Um, oh, so you're s such a loose knitter, the ribbing isn't on the head. So again, you, you have nose shape it's in it, but if it works, it works for you. That's fantastic. Back to negative ease. So when you're like, a head's, an average head is like in the 20 to 21 inch in circumference range. So most of the time I design the hat band when it's laid flat to be about 19 inches so that when you put it on, it stretches it out. And that is what keeps it on your head. So that's negative ease. Uh, positive ease would be if your head was 21 inches and you knit something at 23 inches and then it's just going to fall off. Oh, Noro Ito. Noro Ito is a lovely, lovely yarn. Um, the width almost doubles. You know what? Okay, Noro. 
Okay, I got a couple questions here. Finished them. Okay, remind. Okay, Noro Noro mohair cardigan sweater picked up button band and started knit one pro one. Um, so, <laughs> Linnell, you're 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 that is that is a sad situation. Okay, so there are three questions here. So, Noro is its own beast. Okay, um, uh, there's there's nothing really normal about Noro yarns. Th that's that's just the way it is. Noro is is spun in a very different way. I've not heard of it changing that substantially, um, but that's a good thing to know that you swatched and you know that. I, I really don't have a solution for that. Noro is one of those ones that if I'm going to knit with a Noro yarn, I am going to actually look for a Noro pattern because it's the uh, their their yarns are so specialty and they're so unique that they really need things that are designed to work with them. Um, okay. Linnell, I I um so Depends on how the cardigan is supposed to fit. You could conceivably like crochet little loops that would function as button holes. Um, frogging mohair is, yes, a giant pain in the tukis. If you have to frog mohair, the way to do it is to put the yarn in the whole project, the whole kit and caboodle, put it in the freezer. I know that sounds like ludicrous, but it helps. So I had a project, I was knitting a shawl that was in, um, that was in mohair and I made a mistake and I had to frog like 12 rows. And what I had to do is I put it in the freezer, left it in the freezer for like a half an hour, pulled it out and it makes it much easier to frog. And you frog until it stops being easy and then you put it back in the freezer and you let it freeze again and you pull it out and you get a little while where you can frog it and it just goes in and out of the freezer because for some reason, freezing mohair makes it easier to frog. That is the, the main advice I have on frogging mohair. I'm afraid that buttonholes are not my area of expertise. Technically, you're making a fabric. You could like slap it on a sewing machine and sew buttonholes into it because it's a fabric. That's just the way it works. Um, Tracy, you have cats, floors aren't good. Is it okay to fold a lace wrap in half to block it on a bed? Yeah, you definitely can. You, you definitely can fold it in half. What will happen is once it's dry, you'll have like a seam that has been blocked into it. And when I have a seam like that, what I do is I then lay it flat and use my handheld steamer and steam out that seam. Another solution that a friend of mine who has cats taught me, have you ever seen a dressmaker's board? You can you typically order them from Joann's or Amazon. And what it is is this huge accordion fold cardboard doohickey right? And it's a dress, it's called a dressmaker's board, or I think they call it a super board. If you search for dressmaker's super board, you should be able to find it. And what you can do is open that up and especially with like a lace shawl, block it to it. Now it's going to be damp and it's cardboard. So it's something that, that over time will deteriorate. The one I had lasted three to four years before I just had to chunk it. And if you use your pins and pin pins and wires and pin it out so it's not going to move, like we're talking guitar string, like it's not going to move. If it's on this board, you can then take that board and actually put it so it's vertical. Uh, my friend who had nine cats um, in a two bedroom house, what she would do is pin out her stuff to a dressmaker's board so it didn't shift or move and then slide it into her bathroom and make sure there were no cats in the bathroom and put, she actually had a dehumidifier in there as well and just close the door so the cats couldn't get to it. But you can definitely pin to that rigid cardboard surface and then make it vertical. You can slide it behind a headboard or something so that if you wanted to do it flat, but you could also fold it in half and do it that way and just steam out your seam. Um, okay.
Uh, how do you maintain the tension for bind off on a tubular cowl so that it's not tight on the end compared to the beginning? Uh, my hope would be that whatever pattern you're using, your uh, the designer took that to consideration with suggesting a, a bind off. But yes, your if you're just using a standard leapfrog style bind off, it is going to be tighter. So what you need to do is use a stretchier <laughs> bind off or a bind off that more closely matches your cast on. Uh, I have here on my site, uh, on my on my channel, I have a link to the expandable lace bind off is one that I use. Now, the expandable lace bind off does tend to flare and it might actually be wider. So something that I don't think I've seen talked about a lot is you can actually mix bind offs. So what happens is I'll start off trying the expandable lace bind off. And if it flares too much, what I'll do is like, especially if it's cowl and it's a ribbing, I'll do like the expandable lace bind off for one stitch and then just a standard leapfrog. And I'd alternate between expandable lace and leapfrog to, to control my tension and get just the size that I want. But there's a fantastic book called Cast On and Bind Off by the author's Cap Seas, C-A-P-S-E-A-S-E. -E, and that is my go-to for figuring out the best cast on and bind offs for a particular project. When I'm designing a pattern, I frequently will go through multiple different cast ons and multiple di more bind offs than cast ons to make sure that the bind off is doing what I want it to do, that it's not going to be too tight or it's not going to be too loose. So experimenting with different bind offs and getting the, the tension that you want. But most of the time, if you just use your standard leapfrog bind off, it is going to be too tight. And I know that some people recommend just going up a couple needle sizes when you're doing it, but I find that that, personally, when I do it, it looks sloppy. It just looks loose. So I like playing with different bind offs. Okay. I hope that helped, Veronica. Thank you, Lee. Uh, yes, uh, does, Lee has asked me, does bamboo stretch? Yes. Bamboo stretches. Bamboo is, uh, anything that's labeled bamboo is a rayon, and it is a rayon made from bamboo fibers. So that is actually called a uh, man-made MCC, a man-made cellulo MMC, man-made cellulostic fiber. They are natural fibers because they're made from cellulose, but it's man-made in that it's not a fiber found in nature. So the bamboo stretches. Bamboo stretches like crazy. You have to swatch very carefully with bamboo and block it when you swatch it. I have done, um, I did, I have done pieces where I, I, I like swatched with the needle size I thought I was going to need. And then once I blocked it, it had to go down like three or four needle sizes. It, it is, bamboo is a stretchy, stretchy beast. Um, Laura, would a Chinese button hook loop work for the sweater? Those are really cool, Laura. That's a good idea. <sighs> okay. Is there a special way to wind a... Okay, so Sylvia is asking me... Sylvia is asking me, is there a special way to winding a hank of lace silk without getting a complete mess? Yes, bamboo is kind of like mercerized cotton. I agree, Deborah. So whenever... Okay, lace silk anything that is super super slippery and has like no grab to it like like lace silk is something that i'm gonna hand wind um i know it takes a lot of extra time but i'm actually gonna hand wind it into a ball because when you try to wind it into a cake it kind of collapses into itself so i'm gonna put it on a swift and hand wind it. It might take a long time, but you end up with, you know, your little softball sized ball 
and it's it's not going to make as big of a mess as if it were wound into a cake and if you do manage to wind it into a cake you definitely 100 percent do not want to center pull because as soon as it starts getting a little bit hollowed out it's going to collapse into itself and you're just going to have a hot mess so yeah um there are certain things you just just have to hand wind the silks if i was doing any ten cell i would definitely hand wind that um and, and things like that before i learned super stretchy bind off i used crochet you know what there are crochet bind offs that work really well i've not messed with the italian bind off there's a really cool icelandic bind off there's so many cool bind offs out there i like playing with them um Okay, <laughs> you guys see I'm, I'm trying to read and it's getting a little dark in here because I used to have the window here and actually my, my husband's much more well lit than I am, but the light is far away from where I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Deborah liked that tip. I... I don't even remember what the tip was at this point, Deborah. <laughs> I'm glad that whatever thing I said worked for you because I'm just kind of flying by my seat of my pants and it's much harder to scroll back through the questions because I'm having to like go up here and look at things. But yes, Knit Witch, they're really cool crochet bind offs and they can definitely be loose. Um, if I had to do a Pico bind off, 100% I'd be using crochet. Uh, crochet is so, 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 so much easier for a Pico bind off. And honestly, my golfer, if I was attempting your bobble bind off, I probably would have used a crochet hook. Bobbles are much, much easier to do with a crochet hook. Here in Miami, I'm getting zero rain. Miami has had a lot of wind. Very, very little rain. We had some a little while ago, but nothing, I mean, nothing out of the ordinary for Florida. Florida just gets rain. We're, we're like in the tropics. So, but yeah, my, I said we got very rain in my son, the peanut gallery. He's like, we got some rain. Yes, we got some rain. Nothing out of the ordinary. Windy, pretty windy, but again, not even, I wouldn't even say it's tropical storm strength. So I think what she was referring to as a Chinese button loop is what she was talking about was those loop and toggle style. You can also, you frequently see them, what I think of them on is the L.L. Bean, um, like the L.L. Bean overcoats where you have a loop and then um, some sort of button. The, the Chinese ones specifically are like a, uh, a knot a silk knot, think of what you might see on those beautiful uh, Chinese coats where you have like a loop and then it'll be a, like a, like a, a strand with a, a little ball on it that it's like a, it's like a hook and eye only made out of fabric, I think is what she was referring to. Um, Italian bind off is just, it's just a name for a bind off. I don't actually, I've never done an Italian bind off and there's probably more than one Italian bind off. There are, so literally the book I recommended, there are, there are hundreds of different ways to, to bind things off and they all have different characteristics and they all have different applications. Oh, there are tubular bind offs. I like the Icelandic bind off. There's one called the, uh, the waitress bind off. There's so many different bind offs and they are so much fun. Uh, some of them, some of them are tedious. They're sewn bind offs that you have to do with a needle. Mm, not my favorite, but sometimes it's what you need. Okay, yarn over girl. I'm trying to come up with my best sock recipe. Uh, I'm afraid socks, socks are not my ballywick. Uh, I have knit like a total of two pairs of socks in my entire career. So I'm afraid that I am not going to be giving you any good advice on socks. Uh, sorry about that, but I'll say when I don't know something. Uh, Lee recently purchased yarn labeled sock yarn four ply. It's cotton and rayon. How does cotton knit up for socks? Um, co cotton doesn't have... Um, Cotton doesn't have a lot of 
memory. Neither does rayon, but it's gonna breathe very nicely. If it's labeled as sock yarn, I'm gonna assume it's gonna knit socks okay. But again, socks are not really my area of expertise. The only cotton, so um, there's a, a, a yarn from Scassell called Kobasi, C-O-B-A-S-I, and that's cotton bamboo silk. And it is, the fingering weight makes nice socks because it also has a little bit of elastic in it. And that elastic makes it very good for socks. If I were going to knit cotton socks, I would probably look for something that had a little bit of elastic in it because the cotton is gonna tend, it doesn't have great memory and it does tend to stretch. But if it's a cotton sock yarn, then go for it. Um, Heidi, you're in the panhandle. You have a lot of wind <laughs> from a different storm, of course. Toe up and knitting from a double strand. Brian, oh my gosh, that is stunt knitting. Don't know why you decided to do that, but hey, more power to you. Yes, yeah, socks, I just don't know nothing about socks. Um, Italian bind off is a sewn bind off, a whole hem of Kitchener. Knit Witch, you are not selling that to me. Knit Witch has said Italian bind off is a sewn bind on off like a whole hem of Kitchener. Nope, that is not something I'll be doing any times. Oh yes, so the, I have seen the pictures of the water going out. It's kind of terrifying. Dude, sock knitters are awesome. <laughs> Denise, you love to wear them but don't like to knit them. That's it. Sock yarners, sock yarn knitters, sock knitters are a very specific breed of knitters. And I have tried to be a sock knitter. One year I declared, you can go back and look on the YouTube channel. One year I declared it to be my year of sock, right? Like I'm like, this is my year that I become a sock knitter. I knit one sock in January and then I finally forced myself to knit the second sock in December because the year was almost over. I mean, so that is, that is my attempt at being a sock knitter. Okay. Um, 15% yak blend yarns, love yak. Yak is going to bring the same kind of properties to a, 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 a yarn as cashmere does, except for it's actually more insulative than cashmere. Yak uh, has a very high insulation properties. It's more along the lines of alpaca in keeping you warm. Um, it has a lovely softness. One of the really cool things about Yak is that Yak really, it, its neutral color is sort of a kind of a, a tan color. So Yak actually makes, or, or and you've got like a silveriness to it. So Yak actually dyes into just gorgeous, gorgeous jewel tones. So I've worked with yarns with Yak in them before. They're very soft, they're very insulative. Um, not particularly, again, think about them as ca like cashmere. Uh, they're not bringing a lot of strength to the party. So typically they're blended with something like wool or silk so that it, it picks up a little bit of that strength. One fun thing about yak yarn is when you wet block it, you'll find out what yak smells like. So that's a thing. Uh, hello, Sharon in Lakeland, Florida. I hope that you are, I hope you have power and I hope that you are doing okay. We are, I am still in Miami where we evacuated and it is wild. Yeah, Lee, you are really not selling this to me. Italian, do not look for Italian bind off in any of my patterns anytime soon. Um, yes, the life, Brian, the life and long grass base with yak, uh, it is. So, and that's a really good point Brian just made. The colors compared to our superwash merinos that you see a lot, yarns with yak in them can seem a little more muted, but I would say they're rich. They're very, they have a lot of depth to it. The thing I compare it to is since the base color of something with yak in it is sort of a silvery color, if you've ever dyed eggs for like Easter, the color you get when you dye on white versus the color you get when you dye on a brown egg. When you dye a brown egg, you get these incredibly deep, rich 
royal colors, but they're nowhere near as vibrant because they don't have that white underneath it, but they're still beautiful. So when you get into yak yarns, you're getting into things that are much richer and some beautiful jewel tones. What is my take on mohair? So, Okay, so what is my take on mohair? I just started using it in the lace and fade boxy. I was really worried it was too delicate to knit. So the thing is, as far as I know, I have never seen a 100% mohair yarn. The vast majority of these lace mohair yarns are mixed with silk. So you're going to have lace, you're gonna have mohair and silk Sometimes there's a little bit of wool in them. Sometimes there's nylon in them. But the reason why they're being blended with silk or nylon is to lend them strength. Mohair by itself is going to, to yield a very delicate fiber, a very delicate yarn, but in the blends, it's fine. Um, mohair can be knit, the mohair blend yarns can be knit by themselves just fine. I actually, if you go back, um, and look through my videos, one of my swatch labs, I actually swatched mohair by itself and then mohair held with something else and I blocked it fairly aggressively and it held up just fine. And that's because it has that silk in it and that's what's bringing strength to the party. So the, the don't worry about your mohair. Thank you so much, Barbara. Um, Oh, there we go. So yes, thank you, Heidi, for recommending a sock person, because um, I am not a sock person. Yes. So that is definitely um, mohair. Thumbs up. Thought mohair can definitely be worked by itself. It is lace weight, though. Brian, I'm currently seaming together a striped sweater, and it's constant battle of seaming and undoing to get the stripes lined up, probably. <laughs> I really like, Brian, that you're asking if anybody has any tips because you know that garments are not are not my area of expertise. So if anyone has any recommendations for Brian on how to get his stripes lined up when he's sewing up a sweater, please let him know. Um, so Brian, I would recommend maybe uh, once we're back open talking to... Uh, Oh, my brain just left me. Lori, about it. Um, using those little clippy things, we have some in the store. Those those little clippy things are like these, it's like, they're like tiny versions of this. The little clampy clampy dudes. And using the little clampy dudes to line everything up before you even start working on seaming can be very helpful. <laughs> Denise, I think it's too late for that. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Forrester, at what is the pattern I used with fingering weight with, um, that was Perseverance, Elizabeth. Perseverance, I used a fingering held with a mohair. Uh, and that is, ooh, block before sewing. That is also an excellent recommendation, Lee. So yeah, the clippy things work great. Block before sewing is an excellent recommendation, Lee. And so blocking to shape before you start sewing it together. And then if you're unhappy with your lay, at that point you can come back with the steamer and um, steam those seams to make them neaten up. You don't have to reblock after that. Uh, my golfer, can we reblock a shawl that was previously blocked? Depends entirely on the fiber content. 90, 85% of the time, yes, you can. Alpaca does not like being reblocked. So if it's like 100% alpaca, you're gonna have a hard time changing its shape at all. If it's wool, you re-soak it and reblock it, you should be fine. Uh, getting into cottons, Cotton, again, has very little memory um, and you may not pull back. So if you overblocked it, you might not get it to shrink back down. Uh, BFL and mohair, you should have no problem reblocking that. 
that that is that is not going to be a problem. Uh, BFL is is just a wool. Wools wools respond to reblocking just fine. Again, you're going to want to soak it and just go through your normal blocking. Um, I do not have a shawl book. Yarn of a Girl asked me if I had a shawl book. I do not have a specifically shawl book. I have books that have shawls in them, but not a shawl book. Will steaming pieces work with a cotton yarn? Um, yeah, steaming works with cotton yarn. Uh, I will, are you, but Brian, so Brian has asked, will steaming the pieces work with cotton yarn? The sweater is Rowan Denim Revive. So it depends on what we're talking about. I would wet block the pieces to your schematic until they're the right size. And when, where I was recommending the steaming was after you have, so blocked first, as Lee suggested, then sew it up and then use the steaming to neaten only the seams. I would not solely steam the entire garment because no, that is not going to be very effective in blocking the entire garment. It's, it, it's steaming. Steaming is not gonna do a whole lot just for the garment. So I don't know if that answered your question, Brian. I hope it did. <laughs> it's a little thing. Um, hello, phone, phone. Hmm. Okay. Did I miss anything? Lots of great suggestions for sock people. And I really don't mind y'all suggesting sock people because I'm not a sock person. <laughs> Brian is a big sock person. I know. Um, Okay, so we are looking at a little over 70 minutes. I'm actually kind of surprised that we lasted this long. Um, I really appreciate y'all hanging out with me and it's gotten, uh, and dealing with my technical difficulties and getting this figured out. So Lee is saying block just enough to uncurl the edges. That's interesting. Um, Yes, actually, that is an excellent point, Deborah. Don't over steam it. This is just like a gentle steam. Make sure it's on low. This is a gentle steam to like even out your stitches. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I am safe. Um, I am a little bit bored because I brought the wrong size needles, but safe is, is more important. I really appreciate y'all bearing with me with this particular uh, snafu and um, I will be hopefully when I get home working on next week's video and hopefully next month's live will be <laughs> completely uneventful so thank you all so much for watching I got to figure out what button to push yes of course Veronica give the thumbs up for the channel um, Okay, Sharon, I uh, would like to try designing a shawl. Do you have a tutorial or course available? I, I, I do not. Um, there's always stuff to talk about. You're right, Deborah. I will think about that, Sharon. Um, so my tiny, if you go back and look on my channel, I have like three or four different the razor winning. I don't know anything about baseball, but Susan, my boss loves baseball. So I have uh, tiny shawl videos that are a knit, knit a top down crescent, knit a side to side asymmetrical. And all of those shawls really, what I was hoping with those tiny patterns was to just teach you how those shawls are, um, Thank you, golfer. How how those shawls are constructed. So if you just take a look at like the side to side asymmetrical shawl and get an idea of how it increases, I really wanted people to play with that and just work other stitches into it. So starting with an existing base shawl like that might be a great way to start designing your own shawl. Um, because how you design it is really dependent on a uh, number one, what shape you're making. But I will think on the idea of how to make shapes. Um, I knew they had, the only reason I know they played baseball is because my boss is a big Rays fan. Oh, excellent, Sharon. So play with those and get a really good feel for like the increased pattern in the shaping. And I will think on the idea 
of a video or somehow a tutorial on how to design your own thing. So, okay, I could talk to y'all forever. Thank y'all so much. Um, I've been just kind of in this room with my son and husband whom I love, but they don't like talking about knitting. So thank you all so much. I need to figure out how to end this thing. Um, huh. I don't know how to turn this thing off. I think I'm just going to push the X button and hopefully that's going to take care of it. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thank you, Linda. And I will see y'all soon. If you have any more questions, ask in the Facebook group and we'll figure it out. Okay. Good night.